Hi everyone, welcome to another video on the JV. Hello. And Millie channel. Today we're going to be doing another review of one of the new Scooby-Doo movies and that is, honestly the title wise this gets a bit conflicted because on Google it comes across as The Ghost of Bigfoot which is more the traditional title however from the DVD and like other media it says Scooby-Doo meets Laurel and Hardy so the first time we're kind of seeing the guest name in the title really. I mean this is a bit crazy because I believe the Ghost of Bigfoot purely for the fact that there's not an episode again like it I don't think like Scooby-Doo meets the Harlem Globetrotters or Scooby-Doo meets the Three Stooges it's always you know there's something something and to the point where I asked Smash shout out to Smash um on Instagram who just said, yeah, it's just called Scooby-Doo meets Laurel and Hardy. So why they came up with such a almost lazy name, I don't know. I like the Ghost of Bigfoot better, but, you know, I'm not... My name isn't Hannah nor Barbera, so I don't know. What do I know? <laughs> I'll admit, they're getting confused in this episode when they don't refer to them as Laurel and Hardy. Yeah, you know what? That's exactly what I was thinking. That's. I mean, we're going to do a plot summary, but... I'm gonna put a pin in that because that kind of wound me <laughs> up a bit. Yeah, me too. So I guess, like you say, heading into a bit of a plot somewhere here. The gang are going along in the mystery machine, Laurel and Hardy are going along in their car and their car crashes and ultimately the mystery machine comes down the road, scoops them both up because they're both heading to the same kind of ski lodge really. Um, which turns out to be very quiet, so the gang have no problems getting a room and also Laurel and Hardy, there for a job. So um, that's kind of the purposes for the visit. Um, it's certainly, you know, fair to say that the gang are enjoying some skiing and everything, but of course it wouldn't be an episode without a bit of a mystery. So we see Bigfoot, who I personally think, and we'll get into this a little bit more, I saw them and went, that's the abominable snowman. It's like, chill out. And then it just wasn't. So I don't know, kind of something to come on to there. Uh, but ultimately, as you would expect, this is certainly a mystery. And it's, you know, the job for the gang to solve it and hopefully bring some tourism back to the ski lodge. Yeah, that's amazing. What a good plot summary. So let's start at the very beginning, the title. Scooby-Doo meets Laurel and Hardy. So, you, Millie, <laughs> I know we don't speak about this a lot, but what is your background with Laurel and Hardy like? What what do you know about them? What don't you know about them? So I thought I knew Laurel and Hardy. Um, my uncle, huge fan of them. And so because I've heard him mention them a lot, I was like, yeah, I'm going to get this. And then all of a sudden they weren't calling them Laurel and Hardy and I was confused. To look at them, I wouldn't have associated with them with Laurel and Hardy either. So either i am was been a bit of a fake fan over the years or the best no i mean are they uk people i think so because they are dressed like stereotypical uk people and i was almost yeah thinking, they look like they work in a bank in the uk i can just re rationale them as like british uh three stooges but the two stooges the british okay. two stooges they're just two funny people supposedly but i mean where would your knowledge at with them honestly i have no clue all i've heard all i've like my only reference point is there used to be two people that used to like knob about in class they just used to muck around and stuff and one of the teachers nicknamed them laurel and hardy so i kind of knew that they were going to be kooky but that's about it okay well i guess getting into the episode then because obviously we're taking this at face value neither one of us actually knew them that well um first of all we see the gang in different outfit the kind of winter look hey am i right in saying this is one of the first times they've really changed the outfits that much yeah well apart from at night time i think this is the second or third time because they did it in like the last episode of where are you season two i think well i will say i think it's done very well here oh man oh well, i actually love it all of their outfits i think are on point i think there's one thing that they'll change about any of them Again, it's um, it's only a matter of time that these are made into Funko Pops or Funko <laughs> Sodas or something because they're iconic in their own right. But I think Definitely more Chase. Oh yeah, there's well, there's one company I think not is it Figures Toy? It might be Figures Toy. Is it Figures Toys or that robot one? But they're just so expensive to get in the UK. So at least with Funko, I know that by hook or by crook or someone's gonna have Funko over here. So. Funko, please make it happen for Christmas as well. Mm, certainly. Now, 
I'm gonna throw out a bit of a contro uh, it's probably not controversial I think it's you know actually quite accurate really but a bit of an opinion out there I'm kind of getting tired of how these episodes start because I feel like there isn't one of these crossovers that hasn't started with a car crash of some mm -hmm. some sort do you know what I mean almost like there's no other way for their paths to cross than someone's car breaks down and it's like come on do you not have social interactions do you not know people meet in different ways like the gang are meant to be teenagers they could be meeting people in school they could be meeting people in Coolsville they could be friends with people they've helped in the past it could be hey we've seen Daphne and Velma recent read Daphne and Velma recently like you know perhaps somebody's shooting something and that's how they come across one of these stars because like I say I feel yeah. like this formula of a car I remember when they could have done old. that with um what's her face I really liked her so I'm a bit sad that I forgot her name but they were doing that there they just always have to get that yeah. car accident before was it Sandy Duncan? It was Sandy Duncan and Jekyll and Hyde. The thing is, I um, can rationalise it in a cool way, but I don't know if you'll accept that. All right, well, like you're saying with the Sandy Duncan thing, they're like, it wasn't the car crash that really caused their meeting. Like they were on the set already. They just threw a car crash in there. And it's kind of like, mm, don't need to do that. My rationale is the original series was all about the gang not being tied to a certain place, but they're going from A to B in a car in the mystery machine yeah. so they're going from point a to let's say point c for the sake of the analogy my kind of rationale of this is that these could always uneasily take place in between episodes of where are you season one and two this is just what happens in those occasions when on their way to, to from a to c they break down and get to b that yeah. type of thing so I don't know. This could just be its own spin off said, what if the mystery machine crashed before this episode? So I don't know. It's not a good rationale. It's not even reasonable, but it's like, you know, they're always traveling. Who knows how old that car is? And I guess that's just make an adventure from it crashing, but yeah, kind of I mean... lazy writing. But not only that, you have to also imagine that, I guess, if the animation people we're rushed and we're told we have to get these many episodes out by this time it could even be that well we're not going to have a setup location let's just have the mystery machine which we've animated backgrounds which we can reuse and have it stop and say oh look something's happened so if it happened today like in guess who i guess it doesn't always start like that maybe it'd be different i mean my thoughts are i guess we have a few episodes left before the end of season one of the new scooby-doo movies oh yeah, quite a few actually and i'm kind of looking forward to seeing if we get a bit of a refresh i mean i imagine that stuff like the harlem globetrotters will be different because that's literally a sports play like sports people and the gang are traveling i expect and i haven't watched it for a while i used to have it on dvd like beforehand I expect they're going to get to one of their games, watch them play, and stuff's going to happen at the match. Maybe that's wishful, but that's how I see it going down. Mm, I'd say that was reasonable. Now, another issue I have with this episode is that the gang see Laurel and Hardy, and they're like, oh, yeah, that's Laurel and Hardy. We know who you are. And so we kind of see... Now, maybe this is me kind of taking a few, um, you know, incorrect assumptions of celebrity, let's say. But to recognise Laurel and Hardy, you'd think they were aware of them as celebrities. So why are they trying to get jobs as a bellboy? It's tricky. How is it that the gang can afford to stay in the ski lodge when they don't get paid for solving mysteries? But then Laurel and Hardy, you know, these stars can't afford to stay there and have to... Well, away. we don't know the background of the gang. Obviously, it's weird with Laurel and Hardy. I think... When they're going on to be bellhops, bellboys, whatever you call them, I think it's the writers just trying to say, okay, we have guests, we don't really know what to do with them, but if we give them jobs in the main location, then it makes sense story-wise. But in terms of the gang, I, I don't know. It could just be Daphne's parents that are rich, and that's why they can stay and do whatever. Mm. Um, there's something else. I think, again... We've mentioned Bigfoot or the Yeti, whatever yeah, they're called. Yeah, we are at about the time we're seeing that. Now. I think a good credit to this is that it isn't just, as we say, the mystery machine crashing and stuff. Like, it, well, it, it starts with Laurel and Hardy crashing because of the actions of Bigfoot. And so, for all it's kind of lazy, it's kind of samey samey, 
is not just this happens to have happened it's this is showing the threat of bigfoot the ones that we're going to be facing throughout the episode okay question for you jb oh no what's your thoughts on the villain i honestly because i refuse to call them bigfoot i like the villain a lot they are kind of creepy i think they're more than just the generic big ape that you'd expect from a yeti or a bigfoot or whatever their issue is, is that I think it should have been... I mean, I don't know what the name will change, but it, it definitely isn't Bigfoot. I don't know if Abominable Snowman has been copyrighted by someone or Yeti isn't a thing, but yeah, it definitely isn't Bigfoot. That's what I'll say. No. I think aesthetically it looks like a great villain. I'm certainly behind it. I just think slightly confused in concept because for me... You talk about Bigfoot and I'm thinking a forest. Well, I have a question for you on that then. Would it only be a Yeti or the Abominable Snowman in a geographical location that's always cold? So yeah. at the start of this is snowing, clearly winter time, but you kind of see Daphne or if maybe it's Velma kind of tell Scooby off for singing a Christmas song because it's not Christmas yet. But I'd say you're pretty much in the clear to sing Christmas music from early december onwards maybe even the end of is it november before december i'm blanking yeah. it is, isn't it from the 25th of november right maybe and so for her to berate him for singing the christmas song but it's also snowing where are we assuming they are geographically because i can forgive it's just a snowy place in a place that isn't normally snowy i guess bigfoot's just put on a disguise or i guess bigfoot's just adapted I'm gonna say based on the fact they're going these places in the mystery machine you have to assume they're somewhere in or around america i'm gonna say maybe you can get you can go skiing in canada right up in yeah the mountains i'm gonna guess around there so would it snow there in any other month than december yeah i mean ultimately um december january and february are winter months hmm. depending on geographical location so it could have been, yeah, so that makes sense. I was just wondering if it was Bigfoot purely based on geography, not looks. No, for me it's weather, do you know what I mean? Like, to me you wouldn't find the Abominable Snowman in Hawaii. No, but that's why it isn't the Abominable Snowman, maybe. I don't know, I'm, I'm not too, not too kind mm. of sold on how they've named the villain. Mm, it is weird, because they can choose, wise, I'm in. animation-wise, what it looks like and where they are. So it's weird if that they've not clarified anything, it. anything, by blending concepts, they've eradicated a choice that they could have utilised later. Yeah, because Bigfoot would you... be cool in and of itself. They could have had, like, a camping episode or something. Yeah, and, like, think about how Bigfoot could have been interpreted. Like, we've seen it before where they're driving along and then there's this huge like footprint in the ground that's the size of about 20 of the gun. Then again, Scooby history, we, we're familiar and we pretty much accept a villain that pretty much does the same thing, which is El Chupacabra in Monster of Mexico. That's pretty much Bigfoot. Yeah, but the actual El Chupacabra is supposedly some starving dog. I don't know enough about Mexican folklore to comment. Let's see. <laughs> okay so moving on um yeah i said you said you wanted you did say you wanted to put a pin in this laurel and hardy not being called laurel and hardy yeah this is a problem for me because i feel like i'm so sure i'm speaking no, no 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 go for it i was gonna say i feel like they realized this could be a problem hmm. because fred starts going mr laurel mr hardy and I'm like, okay, so you've picked up that no one has a clue what's going oh, on. Oh, but that's the thing. In the Free Stooges episode, we speculated if they were meant to be based on the real Stooges who had since broken up, or if they were based on, say, a possible Hanna Barbera cartoon version of the Stooges. And with Lauren and Hardy, it's like we know them as characters, that like they are performing characters essentially, and everyone does like goes by some type of handle, like even we right if we were doing say if we were hit up by warner brothers tonight and said oh do you want to come on the next episode of scooby it would be us as people know us in a way that we would be playing off our dynamics that people know potentially that watch us and you know that have become staples of the channel like it would be a lot of daphne simping from me because that's my thing right whereas if you and me 
you know, five years ago were asked to do something like that, or if we actually met the Scooby gang in real life tomorrow, that would be a very different, you know, scenario. And so it's like, you maybe need to choose Laurel and Hardy, the com the comedic duo that people supposedly know, or you have to fall back on their real personality, as in, they are the Scooby gang in real life who have met a celebrity in real life. Mm -hmm. And I think they've kind of half chosen, and I think they need to commit fully to make it make sense. Because right now, it's sometimes the Laurel and Hardy public face, other times it's Stan and Ollie who no one really knows. Yeah. It's like they have an episode starring Elton John and they call him Reg the whole time. Like, it's just not really... It, it wouldn't make too much sense. No, I completely understand where you're coming from. So, ultimately they all arrive at the lodge. Um, Stan and Ollie are going to be bellhops. And they take the gang's luggage to the room and then, as they're all settling into their rooms, they are disturbed by Bigfoot during the night. Hmm. Yeah. So again, it's like a interesting divide. We have Laurel and Hardy sharing a room, Shaggy, Scooby, Fred sharing a room, and Daphne and Velma sharing a room. I think the Yeti or Bigfoot goes to Daphne and Velma's room. Mm -hmm. So possibly a bit of a perverted creature. It must be JB. It's not JB. <laughs> okay. So ultimately. Leads to a bit of a chase scene, but something I enjoy about this episode is the art style. Like, you know how when it's snowed the next morning, everything's covered in snow, the mystery machine can't get out? It kind of takes me back to my childhood a little bit. Like, I remember my parents used to have a business, so they were always up working till like midnight and stuff. And when it was snowing, I used to like be up all night looking out of the window like seeing the snow in like street lamps and stuff kind of like am i going to go to school tomorrow i'm going to go to school tomorrow and just seeing it kind of coat the cars and stuff and i don't know i absolutely get so excited about snow and snow scenes and everything yeah i mean it's 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 good it's just unexpected right like it's you can pretty much reuse all of the animation styles in terms of you know not real world but from our point of view but just give it a layer of snow and it's going to be new and interesting I mean, honestly, I get too excited about snow. Like, honestly, I had a conversation with my boss, well, my boss's wife last week. Like, I kind of live about 20 minutes away from work. So uh, how do things work if it's, like, start snowing and stuff? So ultimately, the conclusion we've reached is I can work from home if it snows at all. Oh, I need to take my laptop in to get it all set up. But yeah, I get so excited about snow. I'm already there for it this year. Oh, imagine that in the garden. I love snow. Snow is good, I just don't like ice. How fun would it be now we've got our own garden? Mm. Mm. But no ice. And the issue is because a lot of, like, the front part before the grass is concrete. I could just slip and die. Just jump from the door. Ooh. <laughs> no, I like that, actually. But then yeah. if I have to jump back in, then I will have a problem because I love wet shoes. Okay, so the next bit is they utilise the fresh snow and try and go skiing. So as the only person here who's been skiing, JB, yeah. can you share your knowledge with us other than <laughs> <laughs> other than the best way to stop is to crash into the first person you see? No, it's... <laughs> no, because it, it's weird. I don't know why I did that in hindsight. If I, so here's the thing. You know they said that you've got... The poor person was just enjoying their skiing holiday <laughs> and you target them... <laughs> There's your barrier. <laughs> no, because it was actually mad. Because they say that you have like less fear as a kid in many respects. I'm, I'm almost thinking like I would never have gone skiing today because it was such a big steep hill that you had to ride a whole escalator to get up of. And I was going down. I didn't know how to stop right because I didn't know if I were to just move one foot in front of the other. And so I just thought, okay, the, what's going to happen is I'm going to go down and I'm going to crash into, like, some fence that was at the bottom of the slope. And so I was like, right, I'm not crashing against that. So I did literally purposely look at a guy and then veer off, and I remember crashing into their legs. <laughs> and did you not start off on a lower slope? Did you just go straight up the ski lift and well, the back? My, my mum wanted me to go on the slower slope because my sister went to this like kid class where like they taught the kids how to ski and I tried that for a day there were other people there I thought sod this I don't want to speak to anyone I just want to go up the high slope 
And so I think I made that much of a stink that I didn't need to do the classes. And so, yeah, I just crashed into this poor guy. Okay, well, it's certain, certainly fair to say that the gang mm. perhaps a bit more sensible than JB. Uh, <laughs> I believe when they return, Mr. Crabtree has gone missing. So what do you remember about Mr. Crabtree? Cause... He reminded me of, like, an animated version of Old Man Smithers. I don't remember even seeing him. He was a geezer in a wheelchair, I think. He was just like, oh, I think the main concierge was like, oh, we only have one guest so far, and it's this guy, and he was just in a wheelchair talking about wheel things. I don't know. Okay. He was just sat there. Hmm. Yeah, well, ultimately, the gang go exploring. They find kind of like a wooden cottage, I think. And inside's a projector that shows how Bigfoot is moving around. Yeah, so weird here. They seem to have a lot of half chase scenes and fun sequences. Honestly, I think it's a bad sign for one like this because I think it's an indication that for all it's fun, and I do think we get somewhat of a traditional chase scene here, which is always great to see how, you know, scenes like that must have stuck with people for so long that that's become a staple of Scooby stuff despite not really being in the original series. People assume it was there from the start, that's how iconic it's been. But I think narratively it's a bit like, we've got a story, oh no it's not long enough to fit the runtime we need, let's just add in filler, so... Mm. But it was fun. It was really fun, I like it a lot. It was, and as they're exploring the old mill, Scooby finds a hidden passage, um, and ultimately they see Beneath that, that there is an array of stolen cars. So this leads to again another kind of quirky little scene. Shaggy, Scooby, Laurel, and Hardy all get dropped in paint as part of the kind of trap progresses to ultimately unmask the other guest, Mr. Crabtree. Yeah, so they are the villain, the ultimate villain. That you know, their motive was just to get cars, right? They wanted to get the cars and sell the cars, and they wanted profit. And it ends because the gang wants to stay longer, but the concierge tells them that because they've got rid of all the problems, they now can no longer afford to stay at the hotel because it's doing so well. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, quite a happy ending. Laurel and Hardy get the jobs they wanted. The hotel's doing well, although I'm going to say that the that the kind of the kind of owner of the inn owes them free holidays for life. He shouldn't have turned them away. No, or at least a free lunch. Shaggy and Scooby would probably go for that. Yeah. But yeah, very happy ending. Um, with this GB, I'm going to hand straight over to you. Smash or pass? It's a weird one. I kind of feel like it's a decent enough story, classic story that you'd find in Where Are You? But I think because of that, like it wouldn't have been a fantastic episode of Where Are You to start with, to be honest. But even if it was, I do think this is one of the instances where the guest kind of let us down a bit. Like, we get... I think our next episode is maybe the third time they've met the Three Stooges, right? Mm. And to me, you could have almost have made this the Three Stooges and nothing would have changed. Like, you would have got the same story, the same things. I think the guests were almost too similar. Maybe they're similar in real life, but I think they could write them differently for something like this. So, um. you know, I, I, I kind of taken nothing away from this apart from Laurel and Hardy were like the Three Stooges and for some reason the Stooges appear more but I don't know. I feel like what you're kind of getting at here and I think it's a valid point I feel a lot of the guests within this series is just this is a generic comedian this is a generic comedian let's have them act silly let's have yeah. them act stupid and <laughs> I think a few of the guests not just Laurel and Hardy and the Three Stooges but others you know the one who Phyllis Diller Oh no, she was terrific. She, yeah, she'll never be forgotten. But you know that one who, and a few people might not like me for this. You know where they're looking for the chicken seed, and I said there's that one that was really annoying. Oh, um, Jonathan Winters, yeah. Yeah, I feel like he's another one. It's just yeah, he like he could have been a just. Yeah, you know. it's just like here's a generic comedian. They're gonna they're gonna act a bit stupid. But then at least he had like the throwing his voice and impersonations thing. Yeah, but Shaggy already had. Whereas that. Laurel and Hardy, Free Studios, they're just a double act or a triple act where they just act a bit silly which is fine it's scooby it's just i don't know it, it's like it's like us if you look through the playlist of all of our interviews i would beg apart from a 2002 special 
I will beg people to find two authors next to each other in that playlist or two actors next to each other in that playlist because there's a conscious effort to keep things kind of varied so I think with this it's like if they've got one full season like they would have known going into the recording going into the scheduling who's going where maybe if they're going to do a second season don't do one less Laurel and Hardy or do, do one less Stooges one you know, but move Laurel and Hardy back and then just have someone completely different, like an author, right? An author we haven't seen yet. And that would be great to see. Could you imagine? And we spoke about this recently. Well, Jeepers, it's, you know, Stephen King. Like, could you imagine, like, a Stephen King episode where they just meet the guy mm. in his house? Like, just an author, any author. And if they can't do that for whatever budget reasons, little Ben Ravencroft. Yeah, and they're doing it in a couple of episodes' time. Like, we've never had, like, a sports person before, let alone a sports team. I'm looking forward to that episode because it's something a bit different. So I think I'm going to pass this one. You could do with one. an artist. An artist would be cool. But I'm going to pass this one because if it was just a standard episode of Where Are You, it would be fun but a bit samey-samey. And here it's that, but I think the guests just kind of weigh it down in the fact that it didn't. they didn't need to be there. And I just think a lot of times they just kind of get in the way. They're not awful, but they're just extra stuff that we don't need. What about you, Millie? Would you smash or pass? Scooby Doo meets Laurel and Hardy. I think for me, this was just a very generic episode. There was no standout features. But that being said, there was no standout features. Features, so there was nothing that outright went out of its way to upset me that I thought was distasteful or that I disliked. So for me, it's kind of a nothing episode. But that doesn't mean that I wouldn't rewatch it. So it's a smash for me. Oh. But a light smash, like I said, it, it's a generic thing. It's given me no reason to dislike it. I just wasn't impressed. I mean, I will say, we're definitely progressing to a level where we're going to see the tail end of at least season one of the new Scooby-Doo movies. And I do think it's declined somewhat from when we started. But again, there's so many that I'm looking at and I'm hopeful for in the mm. future. So... Yeah. I'm, I'm hopeful. There's a lot of hope in the future. I guess as well we want to kind of take the opportunity of this recording, this opportunity, uh, this recording, uh, this review is going out later today. Today, I uh, know JB wanted to mention, was the day of the National Day of Mourning, the state funeral for Queen Elizabeth II. So that is partially the reason for the delay. Yeah, so, you know, we watched the funeral and it was it was a, it was a good ceremony it went off without a hitch and it was just great to be a part of history and to kind of say thank you to to the queen so huge shout out to to her and her legacy and to the whole family in general so all nothing but good thoughts i don't think there's any links or anything that we can put in the description to commemorate that but this is definitely an episode that's going out in kind of acknowledgement and just yeah i mean it's never going to happen again to this scale so who knows who knows but yeah the next episode that we are going to be reviewing is The Ghost of the Red Baron, which I think is, again, a, another Free Stooges episode. But I'm not going to let that, you know, take away from things because I'm looking forward and curious to seeing what this Red Baron has to offer. So, so yeah, subscribe for that. We will, um, you know, that will be going out on Wednesday. And... Um, in regards to community news, there's nothing to really throw out there, right? Apart from, I guess, plugging our interview with Jeremy Adams. So he wrote the amazing special Scooby Natural, as well as the Lego shorts and stuff like The Sword and the Scoob, which is a very, very recent film. Please do watch that. It, honestly, I think my... And I'm going to speak for myself alone. I think my interview skills were personally at their best. I think it's one that I've enjoyed the most and I think in general the guest is just so high energy and passionate about talking about stuff like and we literally had like a 20 minute segment after where we just spoke as people so I mean obviously that's not like on the recording but just as a testament to how nice um, Jeremy Adams was really cool experience and stuff that I don't think he's said publicly in any past interviews or press releases. So if you're a fan of Scooby, fan of Supernatural, Scooby Natural, definitely check that out. It's such a special one. It'll be linked in the description. What about Indeed. you, Millie? I feel like I don't have any 
community news there's nothing standing out to me personally uh we are a couple of weeks away from the release of trick or treat and mm. still we've seen nothing else i mean i don't want to see too much people are excited to see clips and stuff and i do think clips will come it's just it's just a, it's like it's a director video that we're all gonna see the second it happens well more most of us are gonna see the second it happens so it's kind of like how many clips do we need and it's not like plot line like a continuity like like avengers or something like if a new clip for avengers surface yeah i want to see what happens to these characters but really for the director video ones it's just shaggy for the first time daphne for the first time velma for the first time so i don't really want a clip but uh, people do people do so we'll wait and see yeah that is it for this video we hope you've enjoyed please hit that like button comment down below and let us know what your thoughts are on this episode and subscribe and we'll see you next time thank you